Hey there do-it-yourself technicians. Today I want to talk to you about adding a screen to your laptop for a more ergonomic workspace. Here in Australia and around the world, COVID-19 has seen many people working from home for most of 2020. As we launch into 2021, with the virus contained in some parts of the world and vaccines rolling out to others, it's hopeful that life and work will return to some sort of normal for most people. For many, this means heading back to work in the office and returning your work from home computer setup. This means many people may soon no longer have the home office setup that they've enjoyed for the last year. So what can you do? Firstly, ask your employer if you can keep your home office setup or parts of it. If they bought a truckload of monitors, keyboard and mouse to allow you to have a better ergonomic setup, they may have no need for them back at the office and may give them to you or sell them to you cheaply. It's certainly worth asking. Even if you have to give back the computer, the rest of the setup may plug happily into your old home laptop that you either gave to the kids or stuck in a cupboard to gather dust. It's time to press that old machine back into service, but give it the ergonomic boost you've been used to with a screen, keyboard and mouse. The first thing we need to know to find a screen to match your computer is what sort of video output connectors your laptop has. You need a plug on your computer to match the plug on the monitor or get some sort of a converter or adapter. I did an episode back in September on laptop and desktop ports that you can see up here but here I'll cover all of the ones that you need to know to connect a screen. There are three types of connector you are likely to find on your laptop. The blue 15 pin VGA connector, the kind of chopped off triangle look of the HDMI connector, or the little oval of the USB-C connector. There's also a couple you may find on the displays themselves, which is the many pinned white DVI connector and the L-shaped DisplayPort connector. Each of these has advantages and disadvantages. VGA is an older analog connection type. These days, many laptops are too slim to actually fit a VGA connector on them. The advantage of VGA is just about every monitor that you will find free or cheap out there will have a VGA port on it. That port's been in use since about the mid 90s, maybe even before. HDMI is the newer digital connector that plugs into most TVs and newer monitors. It's perfect if you're looking to go out and buy a new screen, but a little bit harder to find if you're looking for something secondhand. One possibility here is a cable like this one that will allow you to plug a HDMI cable into a DVI, which you can do because they're both digital. And DVI is much more common on older screens. If your laptop has a USB-C plug, there's many, many adapters available that will connect to just about every sort of port under the sun. You can get VGA, DVI, HDMI, and DisplayPort adapters. You just need to work out which one you want and order it. There's some links in the description down below and a card up here that might help too. If you have a limited number of USB-C ports, you might want to consider a multi-port replicator like this one which I will actually do a complete review of that'll be linked up here next week. It gives HDMI or VGA, as well as network and some USB-A and C ports. So you won't run out of connectors. Now that we know what sort of connectors your laptop can connect to, let's see what we can find to plug them into. If you're willing to spend some coin, look no further than your local electronics store. Pick a size range and a price range that you like and have a look what's available. Make sure you click on the description to find out exactly what ports it has so that you know what you can plug into. If you are looking for something on the cheaper end, you can't go past places like Facebook Marketplace. I searched up monitor, but you may have some luck with screen or display as well, although you'll have to filter through a whole bunch of other stuff that doesn't apply. You can even put in a max price, and then it's just a case of sorting through them, looking for something that suits your needs. Here, I've searched for monitor with a max price of $50 and found a stack of them in my local area. Ideally, I'd love 23 inch or bigger, so I picked out these four. The first has VGA and DVI connectors, and they were nice enough to point out that it doesn't have a HDMI port. This one would be just about perfect if I'm happy to use this cable, which you can buy on places like eBay, and there's a link in the description below. They usually run to 10 or 15 Australian dollars. 
Continuing on, this second one is damaged, so I'm just going to pass on it. The third one is actually a TV, which you can see from the antenna plug over on the right. So it might actually be useful if you wanted a little TV as well. At a glance, it seems to only have a VGA port. But if you look at some of the other photos, the one on the side shows there is a HDMI port there as well. Because it's a TV, the resolution is probably not as good and the quality may not be there either. So this one is definitely a compromise. The last one is a Samsung 23 inch that again has VGA and DVI ports only. At $40, it's $10 cheaper than the first one we looked at. If I was buying from this particular selection, this is the one that I'd probably go for. I mentioned a keyboard and mouse as well. I'm sure you'll find heaps of them probably free on places like Marketplace. But do you really want somebody's grotty old keyboard and mouse? New ones are available quite cheaply, and that's probably the way to go. Question of the day. Are you heading back to the office and having to hand in your work from home machine? Is that going to be a problem? Was this episode helpful? If it was, hit the thumbs up button down below and leave a comment to let me know how it goes. The Tech Doctor exists to help you become your own technician. Learn about the technology, protect yourself from the bad guys and fix it when it breaks. If you're on YouTube, there's some older episodes you may not have seen before here and here and you can click on the logo down here to subscribe to the channel and then click the bell icon to be notified of any new episodes as they come out. Thank you so much for watching, have a great day and I'll see you on the next episode.